The truth of lots of human rights work is that it's people sitting down and talking to each other. Talking to each other is great, but from a photo perspective, it kind of sucks because meeting and conference rooms are often really terrible places to take photos. You might think that there are only so many ways that you can make people talking to each other look interesting. I guess all of us have gone off to a meeting and our communication team has said as we walk out the door, take some good photos while you're there. And so we take 50 photos with our phone in some poorly lit conference room and we come back and they aren't any good and it was kind of a waste of everyone's time. But we can do better and in this video I'm going to talk about how. I think the first thing is about planning. I made a whole video about planning which I'll, I'll put a link to below. But the key point here I think is that before you go into a meeting room, spend some time thinking about the story you want to tell. Is it the story of one or two inspirational people? Is it the story about the fact that the meeting took place at all, that people came together for the first time for some great or important purpose? Is it a hopeful story or a frustrating story? What's the mood that you want to convey with your images? What do you want people to think or feel or do after they see your picture? Thinking about these questions really going to help you decide what your picture or picture should be of so that when you go there you can concentrate on getting it. And a couple of times I've said your picture singular on purpose because most of the time one or two photos are enough. This isn't a wedding, no one wants to see 20 or 100 photos of a meeting no matter how great your panel discussion was. A few good photos are almost always going to be enough. So planning is the first thing. The second thing is about composition. And a big mistake that I think a lot of beginner photographers make is that they take photos and it's often hard for the viewer to know what the photo is of. There are some people here, a bit of a screen, maybe someone standing off to the side. And as a viewer, your eye wanders around and doesn't know what to look at or where to settle in the image. And because you've done your planning and you know what image or images are needed to tell your story, you can focus on getting photos of just that. Photos that are clear and photos that are free of any kind of distractions. One way to do this is try and isolate your subject. Isolate the subject that tells the story you want to tell so that you show the viewer just one important thing. So that the person who spends less than a second scrolling past your photos on Instagram can tell straight away whatever it is that you want to tell them. And this can be hard, particularly when you're taking photos with a phone, because most phones have one lens and it's a pretty wide angle and it has a small aperture. So when you take a photo, you're likely going to have lots of things in it and every single thing is going to be in focus, including lots of things that have nothing to do with your story some random person who just thought you were the caterer, some water bottles, someone's hand, some fake plants, all kinds of things. So we usually need to work a little bit harder to show less and to remove distractions and to help the viewer really understand what is the story that we want to tell them. And here I can give you a few, a few tips about how to do this um, and how to make your images of meetings and conferences a little bit better. The first thing you can do is just to get closer. If you have a zoom lens on your camera or a newer phone with, with several lenses, um, you can use those to get closer. But you can also just take a few steps so that even with a wide angle phone lens, there's only one important thing in your frame. Being closer to your subjects also going to make your images feel more intimate. It's going to make the viewer feel more like they were there with you and that they can relate to the person in the photo that you took. Second way you can do this is to choose what in your image is in focus. If you have an actual camera with some control over the settings, you can do this by opening up the aperture to its widest setting, which counterintuitive is the smallest number, something like f1.4 or f2.8, depending on what kind of lens is on there. 
And if you're using a newer phone, you can do this with AI as well by selecting something like portrait mode. And in both those cases, what this is gonna do is make the background a little bit blurry or very blurry and helps to isolate the subject and reduce the kinds of distractions that are there. And if you're doing with this with a camera rather than a phone, just be careful because with a very wide aperture, if you're not a bit careful with the focus, then you can end up with lots of photos where the person's hand is in focus, but not their eye or whatever, which might not be what you want. Although most new cameras and phones have a way to automatically focus on people's eyes, um, which is scarily clever and, and definitely solves this. So a second way you can focus your viewer's attention is to change your perspective. And again, I made a whole video about using composition and perspective to tell human rights stories. But I think in the context of meetings, one of the best things you can do is to get down really low or up really high. Getting down low is useful for two reasons. First, um, if people are sitting in your meeting, it puts them at eye level so they feel more relatable. They help the viewer in the room, the viewer feel like they're in the room with the people who are there. And getting down low can also help you make what's called a subframe around the subject. And a subframe is just another smaller frame inside the edges of your photo. And you can make one with bottles or books or flags or people or whatever else is in the room. And this frame is gonna help the viewer to understand the subject of your shot. This works particularly well if the story you wanna tell is about one or two people the role that they played in the event that you're taking photos of. Then getting up high can help too, although in a different way. Maybe this is because you want to show how many people were there. Images that say, look how, how great and impressive it is that we got all these people here. Look, look, how, look how cool it is. Meetings can look boring really easily, but by thinking about these different angles, I think we have a chance of showing the audience something that they maybe haven't seen before or quite as much. And as well as getting up high or down low, it might also mean walking away or walking around, looking for an angle that's a little bit different from the view we see when we're just standing in the room and the camera's at head height. Um, you might think about taking a photo through the window or through a door or if someone reflected somehow, just thinking about things that are a little bit different. A second really helpful thing that you can do in meeting rooms is to fix a light. If you can, you're gonna get way better results if you can open the curtains and the blinds and turn off overhead lights. And this is, uh, this is true for a couple of different reasons. First of all, the daylight coming in and the overhead lights are different color temperatures. And mixing color temperatures sometimes looks strange and it can look strange if those temperatures are different on people's skin um, and you want people to have great skin in your photos, I'm pretty sure. The second reason is that the bigger and the closer a light is to your subject, the softer it's gonna be. The rays from the big close light will diffuse and go in different directions around the subject so that there aren't harsh shadows. And if a light is small or far away, there are fewer paths that the rays can take to get to you. So it's gonna create harder and crisper shadows. And these harder shadows don't tend to be as flattering on people's faces, so you won't look quite as good in pictures. This is also the same reason why the tiny little flash on the front of your phone or built into the top of some cameras isn't gonna make anyone look good. They might be useful as a torch to find your keys in the dark, but generally they're not particularly good for taking photos so turn them off um, unless that's a particular style that you want. Obviously you can't always mess with the lights, um, but if you can then turn them off, um, turn your flash off and get as much natural light into the room as you can. And if you're taking a portrait of someone and you can get them to move, then maybe go and ask them to stand next to a window, although not in direct sunlight because that's a far away light source, so harsh shadows. Um, and the window, it's a big close light, so you'll find that the diffuse light coming through it is often gonna make them look um, as good as they can be. And this is the same if one of the photos you need is of the whole group. If you can, get everyone outside, but not in direct sunlight, and then you're probably gonna have the best result. Another thing you can do to 
help your audience understand the, the story that you're trying to tell is to get rid of distractions from your images. And I have a couple of tips here as well. First, think about what's behind the person you're photographing. Is there a pot plant coming out of their head? Um, what's at the edge of the frame? Just think about this to make sure there isn't a random hand or something sticking in and, and distracting this. Um, also linked to this is thinking about the background. Maybe you can move your subject so they're in front of something interesting, or maybe you can move around the room so that from your perspective, they're lined up with something that helps you to tell your story. And then finally, because this can also be a bit distracting, just be careful where you crop people's limbs. And I, I don't know why this is, um, but when you crop a limb at a joint, a, a knee or a wrist or an elbow, for example, it looks a little bit odd and it can be distracting in the final photo. So if you can't or don't want to fit someone's whole body into a shot, then just make sure you aren't cropping them right at the joint. Um, and most of these things you can fix later when you crop and edit your photos and you just think about these things at the end. My final tip for this kind of photography is just to take a lot. Um, and don't be afraid to stage some of the shots you need, even though at the end, as I said, you probably only want to keep one or two. If you're photographing pe people talking, then 90% of the time they're going to be making a weird expression in your photo, um, unless they're posing. So once you've worked out the nice angle and gotten down low and you've got a good subframe or whatever you want, then take a few photos of the same thing so that you can delete the odd ones and keep the one or two where the person looks best and most natural. Um, if you're clear about your objectives, as I said at the beginning, and you know the kind of image or images you need to tell the story of the meeting, then you also shouldn't be afraid to stage some of them. If the story is about police and civil society talking for the first time, then maybe you actually just need to go up to those people and get them to interact in a way um, for you in whatever way makes sense for your story so that you can get the photo that you need. Um, Staging photos doesn't have to be getting everyone in line and saying cheese. It can be asking people to do a handshake again or, or look like they're having a conversation or people writing down ideas or whatever it is that tells the story that you want to tell. And while it can be intimidating to go and ask people to do this, um, they're almost always going to be happy to do it. Um, and at the end of the day, everyone that you ask is going to forget any awkwardness or annoyance after five seconds. And what they are going to remember is that you had a great photo from the meeting. So I think that's all I've got. Um, to recap some of, the, some of the main points, first one, plan the kinds of photos that you want in advance. Two, think about the angles and try and isolate your subject so that each photo is just one clear thing that tells your story. Three, fix the lights. Four, get rid of distractions. And five, just give yourself some material to work with so you've got the best chance of picking a good photo at the end. That's it. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been useful. Um, let me know in the comments if you have other ways that you find are really good for making photos in this kind of context more engaging for everyone. Thanks a lot for watching.